Okay, this is math induction. We're going to jump right into it. We have a blue statement there we are going to prove is true. Step one of a math induction proof is to prove that it works for the simplest case, which we're going to say, prove it works for, I'm just going to say make sure it works for n equals 1. Now think about this. This is a big sum of a whole bunch of terms. If I only stick in only want one term, I'm going to stick in n equals 1. The only thing on the left side will be what? Nope, I've stuck in a 1 that goes in there. The last term of your thing is 5, but it's also the first term in this weird case. Let's say I'd put in 2. Then I'd have both a 5 and a 10. If I wanted 3 terms, I'd have 5, 10, and 15, and the last of them would be 5 times the 3 makes 15. All right, so I am just sticking in n equals 1, and therefore you can use this part of the equation and that part of the equation and stick in 1 in both spots. Everybody do that, please. There. I just rewrote the equation with 1s in it. Until I simplify it down, I won't have actually proven anything. So... It's supposed to be the same on both sides, right? Well, 5 times 1 is really easy. It's 5. And this other side is 5 halves times 1, which is 5 halves, times 1 plus 1, which is 2. And is 5 equal to 10 over 2, which is what it's simplifying down to? Uh, yes, it is. So there, I proved it was true for n equals 1. Okay, that's the first step, and it's extremely easy. Remember me saying then, before I started the video, that to be able to prove something's true forever, I have to prove that it's true for any randomly chosen number of terms. I know we've already got an equation that has an n in it, but to prove that you are choosing a random term in the future, you have to say step two is let Actually, I should do this in a new color. Hold on. Step two. Let n equal some random term. How do we pick that? n is equal to, it's got k, exactly. We always use k as a standard when we're doing induction. And I get that they're both variables. But you have to go through this as part of the induction process of proving. I am now saying that if this rule is true, it should work for any term, and therefore we pick k. All right, so if I let n equal k, all I have to do is recopy exactly the same as the blue formula, except wherever there's an n, I put in k. So I'm going to recopy it. 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus dot, 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 plus... 5, and that's the first place where there was an n, and I put a k, equals 5 over 2, k, and then k minus 1. That was tough. I just recopied the, th the blue thing with a k in it. That is not too tough. Oh, it's a plus at the end, not a minus. Thank you. It's n plus 1, so I'm changing that to a plus 1 down here. Okay. So now, I've shown that I can replace n with any randomly chosen term, k. Now, if I'm going to show that this actually works, I have to recopy this again, except this time, everybody, I encourage you to start way on the left side of your paper because we're going to add some stuff to it. 5 plus 10, your virtual paper, plus 15, plus dot, 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 plus 5k, all I'm doing is copying, but leave space after that left-hand side because we need to put something more there. 5 halves k, k plus 1, and then leave some space after that too. All I did is copy it and left some space. It's not illegal to have space added to both sides. Now, would you agree that at this moment... If I wanted to, I could add 57 as long as I added 57 to both sides. That's just one of those rules in math. You can add anything you want as long as you do it to both sides. 
I'm not saying I want to add 57. I'm saying I could add anything I want, right? As long as I do it to both sides. True? Okay. Now, what do I want to add? Well, I want to show that the next term in line would be what? What should go right here? What should be next in the list of terms? Yes? Yes. 5K was the old last term. Now we're trying to prove in step three. I'm going to write this up here. Step three. Prove for K plus one. We're doing the term after any random term. The any random term was K. The term after that is K plus one. So what comes next in our list? 5, 10, 15. Eventually we get to 5 times k. And the next term would be 5k plus 1. It has to be in parentheses, by the way. Because I replaced the k with a k plus 1. Yes? There's no. I, all I did is copy it. There's no solving involved in step 2. All I did is swap the n and the k. Why is this step exist? Is that what you're saying? Okay, that step exists because we need to choose in that ladder process one step at a time. The first thing you have to do in proofs is prove it works for some number. We did that already. That was step one. The next step in a proof is prove it works for any random number. But you can't just pick another number or you'll have only chosen two numbers and proved them. So to pick that, we had to pick and let k be the random number of terms. We don't know how many it's going to be, so we call it k. So all we did is copy the original and put a K in it, and that's step two. We know it works because all we have done is exactly replaced an N with a K. I get, I get that that step's a little weird, but do you get it's really simple? You just have to copy it. Okay. And all it's saying is for K, it would be very simple because we can replace the N with the K, and therefore it's sort of obvious that it still works. But the hard part is proving that if we go to the next term, which is k plus 1, that it'll still work. If we can prove that, we've proven that anything would work. Because not only any number you pick, but the next number after that would still keep working, then you've proven it. All right, so now, do you get that I just, where I got this term from right there, it's just the next term in line. After 5k would be 5k plus 1. That makes sense to you? Because whatever k is, if, let's say we want k to be 8, then I'm going to do 5 times 8 here, and I'd have to do 5 times 8 plus 1 is 5 times 9 there. It's just the next logical one. All right, so if I add this green 5k plus 1 to the left side, do you get I also have to add it to the right side? Just logically, just like I added 57 facetiously, I can do it as long as I add the same thing to both sides. So I'm going to add plus 5 times k plus 1 over here. So all I have done is put the next term, figured out what the next term would logically be. If 5k is the last term that we had, then the next term after that would be 5k plus 1. And once I knew that put that on the left, you have to exactly copy it and put it on the right. Oops. Do you get that those two green five parentheses k plus ones are the same? I just added something to both sides. That's legal. All right. Right there. That's all you have to be able to do. That's the setup for a proof. Now, that's all. That's your minimums. You got to be able to handle that. That's not too tough. You stick in one, see if it works. You change it to K. And then you just, the hard, only hard part we've had at all is to figure out what should be next here and to remember to put it on the other side too. Now, many people would just say, but you haven't actually proven anything. All you did is add something to both sides of an equation. That doesn't prove anything. You're right. 
Here's the proof part. And if you want to go above and beyond just what you have to know and be able to get more credit towards an A on your test, the minimums would be like an R2 level question. To be able to handle more than that, to be able to get like A's and B's instead of just C's, which we kind of consider a minimum, then you got to be able to take this, handle this next step. Do you have to be able to do this? No. But it will help you to get a higher grade on your test if you can go further. Now, a kid asked me a good question last hour. What if I get it this far, and then I try to go further, but I screw it up? It's okay. You'll get the minimum credit. You'll get the guaranteed, okay, you got credit for that problem as an R2. But if you can complete it, if you can finish the deal that I'm about to do, which is compl complicated algebra, then you're at the higher than the minimum level, as in we're going to maybe give you some extra credit for it. All right. So see if you can handle this. I know I'm being vague on how this is going to be scored on the test. I'm doing that on purpose. But do you get that up to here is what you have to be able to do? OK, now see if you can handle this algebra part. All it really is from here on is a bunch of algebraic steps that involve factoring. Remember my favorite saying, you can factor, you should. And then. One of the others, now it's not a saying, but you can't add fractions unless they have a common denominator. Okay, So this involves fractions. It involves adding. So eventually, it's going to involve adding fractions. So you've got to be able to find common denominators. If you can do that, those two things, which are pre-calc level skills, for Pete's sakes. Actually, they're algebra level skills. Factoring, so it's kind of complicated factoring, and common denominators get you your final answer. All right, so let's see if you can do it. So what do we have to do? First of all, you got to figure out what you need to prove. This right here, I am going to recopy except on the left side of my page. Everybody, please do that with me. 5 over 2k. You can put times as in there. That's what it means. k plus 1 plus 5 parentheses k plus 1. What do we want that to be equal to? That's the question. What do we want it to simplify down to? Nope. We want it to be just like, remember the original statement? Remember our original, original statement here? OK. Main th mainly, what all we do is first we stuck in k for n everywhere that it was, right? We're trying to prove that if you stick in k plus 1 everywhere where n is, that this will still work. So what you're trying to prove now is that if you had just stuck in a k plus 1 here and a k plus 1 there, that it would come out the same as adding the 5k plus 1 that we actually did do. All right, I know. It's complicated stuff. So back down to here. Where did we get this from? It was the next term after 5k. Does that make sense to you? That's why we put it there. Is it legal to put there? Only if we add it to the other side. That's why we had to add this the way it was on the other side. What do we want to prove? We want to prove that that's going to come out the same as if we had just replaced the k's with k plus 1's. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this black part of the equation right there. 5 over 2k times k plus 1. Again, that comes right from the original. 5 over 2n, n plus 1. Okay, But I'm just taking this part right here and saying, what if I had instead replaced my k's with what? k plus 1s. That's what I wanted to be able to do, but I have to be able to prove that this is true. I can't just replace them. Do the laws of algebra allow 
me to add this here. And instead of doing that, put a k plus 1 here and here. No, there's no rule of algebra that says that. The rules of algebra say that if you add something to the left side, you can add it to the right side. In fact, you have to add it to the right side. So this proof statement, then, is the complicated thing to write. All I did is take this right here, copy it down over again over here. But what it's supposed to come out to is the original statement with k plus 1s in it. In case this is a little too messy, I'm going to rewrite this part. It's the original statement, except wherever there was a k, or sorry, an n in this case, the very original, wherever there's an n, we put an n plus 1. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to change the case. And k plus 1. But they're not n's anymore. They're going to be k plus 1's. Plus one, plus one. Yep, thank you. It's the original statement of k plus one in it. Okay, so now here's where it's just algebra from here. Again, if you're taking notes, you'd want to say like original proof statement with n equal to k plus 1. You're trying to prove that you can stick in a k plus 1, and it will come out the same as if you add 5k plus 1 to both sides. OK, so now I'm going to solve this. My first thing is my favorite statement. If you can factor it, you should. Do you get that the blue side here has a k plus 1 in both parts? All right. There's a k plus 1 on the left of the plus sign, and there's a k plus 1 on the right of this plus sign. And so I can factor that k plus 1 out to the front. k plus 1. And then after I factored that out, what's left? 5k over 2 plus 5. Very good. That's the can factor you should part. What's the other part I said would have to happen? Yes. So am I adding some fractions here? Yes. What's the denominator for the 5? False. 1. What do I want the denominator to be? So how can I fix that? Multiply by 2 over 2. OK, question. On the top. There's a lot of tops. What are you talking about? Yep. OK. Uh, if you would rather me put 5 over 2 k, I just want you to understand, 5 over 2 k is the same exact thing as 5 k over 2. They're the same exact thing. Because get how this k has a 1 on the bottom of it? So then I can put it up on the top and it would be 5 k over 2. Same thing. All right. Now that I multiplied the right side there, the, the 5 over 1, I multiplied it by 2 over 2. Now it's 10 over 2, and now they have a common denominator. One more thing. When you're doing proofs, this is something that even I had to learn as a math teacher. I came to the school, and I did not know this. When you're doing a proof, if you have a proof statement like we have right now, this side is equal to this side. You can't change both sides and eventually prove that they're equal to each other. You have to leave one side or the other alone. So I am going to leave this alone. 
I am not going to touch it. It stays in its original state. And I'm going to take the left side and manipulate it with algebra. And until it comes out and looks exactly like the right side, then I will know that I have proven that they are actually equal. All right, so do you get that this has now turned into k plus 1? And then 5k over 2 plus 10 over 2. You with me on that? I just multiplied by 2. Okay. Now, do you get they have a common denominator so they can actually be added? k plus 1 times 5k plus 10 over 2. Does this look exactly like this yet? No. Is there any part that's the same? There's a 5 over 2 in both of them, kind of. And there's a k plus 1 in both of them, kind of. All right, so you'll get stuck at points like this. Again, you're trying to right now get extra credit. You're trying to get something that will get you closer to an A on your test. Cause maybe you got two wrong on your R3s, but you're going to get some extra credit because you can solve this really hard math problem. All right, so then this next step, you search back and you say, well, what would Mr. Server probably say? can factor it, you should. Can you see where you can factor? What can factor? 5k plus 10. k plus 1, and then this 5k plus 10 on the top can be factored into what? 5 what? k plus 2 all over 2. All we did is we found a little place where we could factor. Now, do you get that that's the five halves that we wanted all along? You know, the original's got a five halves in it, right? Now we've got our five halves. It's right there. So the left part, of course, is still k plus 1. And then this becomes 5 over 2 times k plus 2. Aren't those equal to each other? Here, isn't this equal to this? And now, can't I move the 5 over 2 to the front of the whole problem? I now have 5, my final statement here, it's going to be 5 over 2 goes to the front, times k plus 1, times k plus 2, and isn't that strikingly similar to what we were supposed to prove? k plus 1, and they have k plus 1 plus 1. But isn't k plus 1 plus 1 exactly the same as k plus 2? So all I have to do is rewrite it one more time. 5 over 2, k plus 1, and then k plus 1 plus 1 is the exact same thing. And therefore, I've proven the left side and the right side are equal. Nope. You can pull that five, five of halves. Five halves is kind of like a decimal, isn't it? The same as 2.5. Mm -hmm. Just think of it as a 2.5 that's being multiplied in the middle of the problem. You can move it to the front of the problem if I want to. All right. I know that's super intense. I get that. But you're an honest pre -calc. This is where... It's supposed to get super intense. All right, so I want you to find another problem uh, that's like that. Uh, let's do problem one right here. Except I'm going to only coach you on what the steps are. And we'll see if you can actually do the steps. For step one, You'll have to know these. Can somebody tell me? Proof for n equals 1. I think it's page 6. Go on this way. Up, down. No. Down. That way. Keep going. Okay, I was wrong. It's purple. 
Unless that has a dollhouse on it. Okay, tell me what numbers stick in. Guy in the front. Oh, D H. Oh. So you just take phone in and you put put in a one. Can I copy all of this down too? No. Because n equals one means you only want one term. We don't want one plus two plus three plus dot 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 n. N is the only term. N is one. There's only one term. It's the last term and the first term. Okay, so one equals one times one plus one all over two. And I hope that worked, right? One equals one plus, no, one times two over two. And the twos cancel, so one equals one. Cool. I know all of you got that. Didn't he get that? Okay, good. All right. The next step is just about as hard, Mr. T. What's the next step supposed to be? Prove. Okay, so step two. Let n equal k. So you recopy your whole formula that we gave you at the beginning with n's. You just put a k in there. This formula should work for some randomly picked term k. Yes. Copy the whole formula. Because we don't know how many terms it has, right? It has k terms. Step two is the no-brainer, copy the problem when put in a K. We're saying that we can do this for any number of terms. So we picked any number as K. Yes? Yes? All we are doing is copying a formula. It can never that step can never not work. Okay. Yes? Uh, nope. Step two is just changing n to k. You're doing step three now. Okay, so step three. I know you don't think step two is worthy of even being a step. That's kind of what you're saying, but we call it a step. So step three is to let n equal k plus one and make sure it works for that. So now... We're not saying k is equal to k plus 1. We copy the whole formula and we add in something to both sides. Copying the whole formula as it originally was. I'm just going to leave some space. Now who knows what to do? You're going to add k plus 1 here. Why are you doing that? Because that was the last term before. Now, if we're going to go up a notch, that's the last term now. Cool. Now that I did that, what do I have to also do? Add it to the other side. Well, that's pretty easy. That is the setup. That's it. And you're done with what you were required to know how to do. But... And some of you are going to want to go for it. So, do you know what to do next? Yes, sir. Because it's an adding on the outside, it does not have to be in a parenthesis. These are all adding, you know. If there had been any multiplying involved, you'd want it in parenthesis. Okay, so, for those of you that are the advanced students in the advanced class. This comes over here, and I just recopy it down. K, K plus 1 over 2 plus K plus 1. Just wait, wait. 
looking back at the original. K. All I've done is swap out K and N. So K, K plus 1 over 2. I have done it right. Okay, so I brought that over to the left side, and now here's the hardest part. What are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that if we simplify this down, it's going to be the same as if we had instead of adding k plus 1 at the end, if we had done what? Put k plus 1 in the beginning part of it, yes. So we're trying to prove that that k right there could be a k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1. Does that look a lot like the last time we did one of these proofs? All over 2. If you can prove that this statement here, which is the same thing as this statement here, is going to come out the same as if we had stuck in k plus 1s where the k's are, then you've proven that this formula will work for not just any number, like the you pick, but it would pick it would work for any randomly chosen number and the number after that. Okay. So who's got some genius algebra they can pull off to make the left side get manipulated around so it looks like the right side? You might want to look at it and just go, well, it's actually not that far off. But what would I need to do to manipulate it so that it the left side is like the right side? Guy in the green. I know your name, just not for the video. Yep. I like it. Do you agree that if he wanted to, he could put this over 1? Do you remember me saying you're always going to have to have common denominators when you do these? This is the moment. Okay. So it's k plus 1 over 1, and right now I can't add them together until they get a common denominator. So you said it's times by 2. I'm Now I need parentheses. You remember me saying as soon as I involve multiplying, I have to put the parentheses in. I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. Did I break any rules of math by multiplying something by 2 over 2? No. I can do that. Remember, I, this is a don't touch. I can't touch the right side. I can just keep manipulating the left side until it eventually turns into the right side. Okay, I'm going to recopy this down. K, K plus 1 over 2 plus 2K plus 1 over 2. That really didn't help me much. I should have just put them all together all over 2, right? You could multiply that out, but I don't think you want to. Show you what I mean. These, all of this right here, is now got a common denominator. So it's all got a denominator of two, and I just need to add the tops. There. Now, yeah, you could have multiplied that two in, but then you'd have to refactor it back out again because you can't factor. You should, right? Can you finish the deal? This is like extra credit level stuff, but it's not hard from where I am right now. That blue equation, just make it look like the green one. What are you going to do? Factor out the k plus 1. You see how there's a k plus 1 on both of them? It's kind of like the one we did before, except we're in reverse order. There's a k plus 1 in both of these. So I can factor it out to the front. k plus 1. The bottom is still all over 2. And isn't this looking a lot like what we wanted it to look like? The goal was to make it like the green one there. All right, so the k plus 1 comes out, and I have a k plus 2 left. Oh, it's so close. But can I just change the k plus 2 into k plus 1 plus 1? And then I've got it. I know. Heavy duty stuff. And I can put parentheses around that and not hurt a thing. So I'll make it do that so that it looks exactly like the thing we were trying to make it look like. 
There we go. That's math induction. Yes. Only thing I can tell you is on all the problems that I have done, the, the common theme is that you can't do them all the same, that they always involve common denominators yeah. and factoring. Yep. It almost always will be, a, well, think about it. The point is we're trying to prove it for k plus 1, right? So there's always going to be a k plus 1 factored out if that's another theme you want to go with. Yes. All right. So let's actually start with oh, question. Factoring and common denominators. And he said something that's probably smart, too. Think about it. Since we're trying to stick in k plus 1, it's always going to involve factoring out of k plus 1 at some point, too. All right. So I'd like to get to the homework for today. This is just reminders and sequence and sum. And we're going to do a lot of review tomorrow. So I'm skipping over those practice problems. The homework is now going to start having labels of how long we expect the problems to take you. Not that, like, you'll always be able to do it in that amount of time, but that basically, you know how oftentimes I would look at the assignments and I'm not be sure if I was assigning you one that was, like, evil or if it was going to be no big deal? Well, we have the homework where they have the number of minutes next to the problems in our homework assignments now. So... Good question. No, this is just teachers that have done this before. Not not how long the teacher would take. The teacher might take two minutes on this. But it's we know this is an in-depth question, and therefore it should take you about ten minutes. Okay? And a easy question often only takes one or two minutes. And honestly, if you guys are stuck for more than a full minute on a question, it seems like eternity. So it, it, ten minutes is a longish problem already. And just so you know, our goal, you like this number, is to try to only give you 20 minutes at home of homework. Does that mean every kid's only going to take 20 minutes? No. Some kids go slower, some kids go faster, but the target number is 20 minutes. And if you're a especially slow homework doer, it might take you 40 minutes. But if you're especially fast, you might get it on 15. Maybe 10. All right. So in this problem, there's 10 minutes. On this problem, there's 10 minutes. Now, I want to get you started on uh, the first one, but I also want to look at the second one real quick because it looks confusing. It looks different than the other kind. But it's only because it's got a little bit of sequence mixed in. It's one of those rules. You have to prove this by induction. That's the directions in case you wanted to know. It's, this is an induction problem. So it's got step one, step two, step three. But what the heck is supposed to be here? You can just do the same thing as you saw on those other problems. Write out the first few terms. What would the first term be? When you stick a 1 in, and it would be 1 squared, so it would be 1. Plus, what would the next term be? Take a, stick a 2 in, 2 squared gets to be 4. Then you stick a 3 in, and it gets to be 9. Dot, dot, dot. Plus j squared. Or in this case, if we stick in an n, n squared. Why do we want it to be the same? Because it'll be the same as the right side then. This whole right side now. So this is just like writing the proof statement that we always give you. We all, and like I told you, we'll always give you a true statement. This is true. I know it's true. You just have to prove it's true. Okay, so what's the first step? Stick in a 1. See if it works. Easy. What's the second step? Change n equal to, okay, and then you recopy the problem. Then you rewrite it one more time, except you add something to both sides. In this case, you'll replace the k, which will that'll be a k. You'll replace. After that, will the next will be the next term, which will be k plus one squared, and you'll have to add that to both sides, and that's all you have to do, but. You want to prove you can handle the algebra of if you can factor, you should, and finding common denominators, you might be able to finish it. All right, now get to this first problem. Everybody look at the first problem with me. It's the normal kind. I'd like you to do step one and two and set up step three right now. 
before we leave. Yes, sir. Just, just so that they look like the other problems that we have here. See? So yes, they are. But they're just like, you could do the first four numbers if you wanted, or the first two numbers. But you got to get it started. All right, so step one here is stick in a one. So I have three times one minus two is equal to one half times one, three times one minus one. Who complicated equation. Simplify it down, does it work? Three times one is three minus two is one equals one half times one is one half times three times one is three minus one is two. One half times two, that is equal to one. Yay, one equals one. Woohoo. Okay, I proved it for n equals one. Now, what's the next step, Ms. K? Yes, so therefore, this was step one. Step two. There we go. Is to let n equal k. Is it important to actually say that? Yes, you have to show this direct, the steps on the side. And remember me, like on the u statements, you had to say let u equal log x or that kind of thing. Okay, we're letting n equal k. So then I recopy it. 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus dot 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 plus 3. And then I ever see an n, I put a k. Minus 2 equals 1 half k, 3k minus 1. All right. All that was was copying. Question? No, we're not going back. Sorry. We have one minute left. Okay. So now we have to add something to both sides. 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus dot 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 plus 3k minus 2. I have to leave room to add something. Equals 1 half k, 3k minus 1. There. That's just recopying again. What gets added right there? I'm going to add it in green. I'm going to move this all over so I have even more room. I'm going to add it in blue. 3 and replace the k with k plus 1. Minus 2. And if I add that to the left side, I have to add it to the right side. Now, I basically just did all the steps on that problem that you would have to do. So what I expect you to do is to try the hard algebra part. You're going to take this, recopy it over here, and I'm not going to recopy because you can always do that by yourself. But what it should be equal to is as if we had replaced the k's in this red little formula with k plus 1's. If you can get all of this to simplify down and look exactly like this, then you are a master of induction. It's probably going to involve what two things? Factoring and common denominators. You, for your homework, you have to do that. For on the test, you don't have to be able to handle that last step. Just those two. They're, they're tough enough. And that's all I have for you for today.